Biggest predictor of whether or not a child has a feeding disorder is chronic lengthy meals. So if a meal is lasting more than 30 minutes, that's a red flag. Uh, also, if the mealtime is disruptive to the family, if it's aversive to the family, it's not a pleasant environment, then that also raises a red flag that maybe they might want to seek help. What kinds of things do you do when you have a child who has a texture issue? Right. Um, different things. Um, some children are not, don't have the skill set to actually chew and swallow solid foods. So if we have children that are averse to different textures because they don't have the skills, then it's a lot of skill acquisition around that. Um, for children with autism, sometimes we see um, particular sensitivities to texture or only wanting to eat crunchy foods or foods of a certain color. And that is generally more of a behavioral issue. So the treatment for that would, would be different. Um, so it's not necessarily a, a skill deficit as it is a uh, resistance. For parents who really want some hope that if they get some help, what's the likelihood that they'll see some improvement? Right. I think it depends on the child's history, how soon they get in, but every child is different. Some children take longer than others and that depends on the nature of their feeding disorder, um, how long it's been, and things like that. So, but I mean, we continue to try things until we find something that does work.